Yeah, I called her up. She gave me a bunch of crap about me not listening to her enough or something. I don't know. I wasn't really paying attention. Welcome to the Black Irish Podcast. Welcome to an all-new Black Irish Podcast with myself, Brendan McCorkle, and my main man, Mike Crawford. What's up, brother? What up, Brendan? What up, Brendan? How you doing today, man? I'm Another. doing just fine. How are you, sir? I'm good, man. Another trip around the sun. Yeah, I don't know how many more of those I have left if I keep licking envelopes. I did it again <laughs> yesterday. I did it again. I can't stop. I mean, I don't know if it's just because I'm so nice and I keep giving out cards, <laughs> but it's, that's not the case. Um, I just keep licking envelopes. It's just a, one of those like, like insignificant kind of like bad habits that it's never was a bad habit, but now it is. I don't know. It is a very bad habit now, and you should try to break that really, really soon, buddy, because otherwise, you've already been through it. I guess when you lived through it and it wasn't that bad, you're like, what's a Kobe, man? Yeah. I don't know. It's like, it sucks. It sucks not being able to be around other people and scaring other people and that kind of shit. So for that, it's not cool. And you know, it sucks not feeling good, but do you have any other like bad habits that are kind of insignificant? Like, let me give you this. Anytime I tell my kids to stop picking their nose, I usually have a finger in my nostril. <laughs> I don't pick my nose with my finger. I used to talk to my, I don't know, man. I don't tie my shoes as often anymore. Really? I don't know. That's a- Probably a bad habit. No, I'm just lazy, bro. Like it's a really bad habit, but I hate having wet shoestrings or like getting them in the dirt. So it's like a wait. So do you leave them tied and you just slip them on and off? Yeah, no, I don't leave them tied. They're untied, so it's just like I don't tie them, but then I get mad when they drag in the mud. All my fault. Why don't you, dude? Why don't you? I was thinking about trying to make this look cool and it just doesn't or i haven't found the right shoes to do it with because i don't like the laces the bows in the front either so what i started to do with a couple of my shoes was tie on the sides so that they stay tight but off the ground but i haven't find a found a cool way to tie them yet so i think instead of doing a double like a standard bow i'm gonna try and do like a three like maybe shamrock style or some fucking weird shit or even just string them tight across i don't know Oh, man. But I've been thinking about that lately. Shoe straps. I've been late the time my shoes. <laughs> yeah. What? Do you have a lot of shoes? Somewhat. Yeah. I don't know. I I always like I have a lot of shoes, but I only wear like three pairs. Like all the other ones are just like dick around. The amount that I wear is very limited. Like I only wear a certain couple of them. Yeah, I have like a pair of all white shoes, pair of black shoes, pair, pair of like gray and white shoes, and then I have like my tennis shoes for like working out and exercise, and then I have a pair in the garage for, you know, whatever. Oh, and I think I have a pair of hiking shoes. I went, bought, went used them once. <laughs> oh, man. Hey, did you know something? What's that? I think you know. Those trike cars? Definitely a black thing. (laughs) Definitely. I can confirm it. Because when we were in Vegas last week, everybody we saw was African American. Except for one Spanish slash Mexican dude. Everybody else, black. I could have told you the black thing. I'm I'm proud. It's probably a black thing. Well, you said, I thought it was an East Coast thing. Because we talked about it before, and you're like, maybe it's an East Coast thing. Nah. I can confirm it's a black thing. Everybody I've seen is black, too. But I still cannot get over those goofy fucking lights. That's just <laughs> not cool. It's not cool on, on the little uh, Honda Rockets or, not like, it's just those lights. Don't put lights on your car, on the outside of your car. It's just weird. <laughs> and it's distracting. <laughs> it's not safe. 
Oh, I I have not been safe. I've been uh, Doctor Hobbly Wobbly lately. Not the barbecue mm-hmm. guy. But <laughs> I was wondering, like, why are you considering yourself Doctor Hobbly Wobbly? Well, so <laughs> so it started like uh, maybe like a week ago or so. I was like, I haven't been running lately, so I went on like a jog, and I kind of was pushing myself just to see how far I could go, and. I, like, went to trip over a crack and almost ate shit. And I was like, ooh, okay, working out's working. Because six months ago, I would have ate shit for sure. Like, I would never have caught myself. But my legs are barely strong enough to where I was, like, after ten steps of almost falling and, like, waving my arms like a crazy person, caught myself. So I was like, oh, okay, we're doing good. And then Saturday at baseball practice uh, with the older kids, like the 8 to 11-year-olds, we were doing relay races where half the kids are at home, half the kids are at second base, and they have to run all the bases, and it's a relay race. So we had 11 kids. We were one short. So I took the second to last spot in one of the lines. It happened to be the line that was falling way behind. So I wanted to catch it up so the last two would be a tight, you know, like try and make them as even as possible. So in doing this, in rounding second, my right foot, I go to try and hit the corner of the bag, but I'm wearing tennis shoes. So I go and I slip out and I short step, catch myself with my left knee. And I swear to God, I thought it was going to buckle. Like, <laughs> like had this been seven or eight months ago, I'd have been in the hospital. A guaranteed, guaranteed I'd have been in the hospital. But thankfully I've been like exercising a little bit and it was like my leg caught me, but normally it would not. So I was like, you know. Like, stressing out over the past, you know, few days. Like, oh, my gosh, dude. It, like, did I just jack up my knee for good? Like, uh, I don't know. But I'm coming back. I'm coming back strong. I went on a little jog today just to kind of test it out, test the waters. And it was like, okay. You know, a little half-mile jaunt around the block. Like, just to see, okay, we're doing okay. Because I got baseball practice tomorrow, so I want to make sure, like, I need to know what I'm capable of. I don't want to be going to the hospital and having these kids call 911 for me. <laughs> Because <laughs> I'm missing a bunch of cartilage in my left knee. <laughs> you got to stop it. But you got to you gotta stay active because you got the kids, man. So you got to stay, you know. I'll tell you what. Baseball with the kids helps, man. Baseball with Definitely. the kids helps. I'm sure every little bit of exercise helps better than just sitting around in the chair all day like I do, man. <laughs> so. Yeah. Well, speaking of nothing, uh, I went to the store recently and... I like the fact that a lot of stores, grocery stores, uh, like Walmart's Targus, hire special needs people for bagging, for assisting, for all that kind of stuff. What I don't appreciate is the way that they talk to me sometimes because they think I'm not going to say anything back. I don't like it. I was wearing my Giants shirt last week and... I know this dude. We always kind of talk back and forth. He's wearing his Dodgers gear. And he's like, you guys are going to lose. Giants suck. And I was like, okay, well, we'll see. And he's like, no, no, no. You guys suck. I'm like, okay. (laughs) Like, I'm just a polite person, so I'm not going to say that. But why do you think you could talk to me like that? That ain't fucking cool. (laughs) Like, if you were another man and we weren't in public... We would be having other words. Exactly. Like, that's not cool. And the other thing, while we're on the subject that I just created, I don't (laughs) like it when gay people hit on me and they think that it's okay to be gross. It's like, hey, dude, if you don't think I'll hit anybody for touching me inappropriately, you are incorrect. And if you call it a hate crime, you're the one that assaulted me, motherfucker. That's not cool. They can't touch me. You can try to hide, you can try to pick me up. I don't want girls to touching me either. But for whatever reason, it seems nope. like gay men feel nope. like that an extra sense of protection. Like, oh, if you say anything back to me, you're hateful. And I'm like, well, I know my heart. I'll just hit you because I don't like you. I don't care about that. Don't touch me. Exactly. Nobody. Give me a Nobody. And I do, not, do not touch me. Right. Because I am a touchy feely type for those I don't know. Now, if you know me, we're all good. But if you do not know me, don't just touch me. A, yes. give me do a clap. Hey, anything of that nature works. Do not physically put your hands on me. That is man, woman, or child. That's right. The gay, the gay dudes, man, sometimes y'all be overboard with it. Exactly. I can't accept 
know, like we're supposed to like y'all. You know, that we're allowed to be straight. Sorry to say, so let me just hit my little soliloquy since we're on the subject. I like it. I had to me a couple of weeks ago. And like he looked around and was acting like he should get some assistance from people that were around us because I was saying no. I wasn't <laughs> saying it in a mean way. I wasn't saying it in a disrespectful way. No, I don't want to talk to you. No, none of that. Yeah. Just none of that. I'm not interested in any of that that you have to offer. But I'm a girl now. You're not a girl. You are a man that's dressed up like a girl or want to be a girl or feel like you're trapped in a girl's body. Whatever your ish situation is, cool. Yeah. So your situation, keep it to yourself. Once I say no, you shoot, I block the shot. Exactly. And that's it. Hey, that's it's it. like any other rejection. It's like if we go up to a lady, you know, or I would back in the day and hit on her. If she says no, I would politely walk away. That's 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 just it. it. You hit on somebody; it doesn't matter what gender, what cre- what anybody. You hit on somebody and get rejected. Better luck next time. That should be all it is. But definitely no touchy feely, like three foot personal space until you are invited in. Right, three foot personal space. For me, man. Arms length. Arms length. I'm about six three, so my. Arm is about three feet. I should not be able to touch you unless I offer you it, right? Yeah, we're in totally agreement on that. Oh man! And that goes for special needs too. I'm sorry, no offense. Don't don't come in my personal space, bro. Yeah, I haven't really <laughs> encountered that too much. But yeah, agreed. It's anybody. It doesn't matter. It's anybody unless you are in emergency distress and you're like, oh my god, I need to cling to somebody. Okay, like I'll be there for you. But other than that, you need to be invited. So apropos of nothing, I took a little break from smoking uh, the devil's lettuce. Which is always good. Always good to take a little break. And that way when you take the break and then come back, oh man, it's like euphoria. It's nice. (laughs) I'm going to start doing that. Like I got a buddy that takes an entire month off. Once a year, it's usually February because the shortest month, <laughs> but uh, he takes like a whole month off and it, it's just like a once a year refresher for him, which is good. I'm going to try and start doing it like, I don't know, like every other week, take like three or four days off just because it's, I don't do it every day, but it's like, if I do it every couple of days, it like, it's just kind of monotone, you know, but like I took, I specifically took a break from vaping because like, I don't know, you just, there's so much oil and shit that gets in your throat. Like, I just kept coughing shit up, like, I'm coughing up blood and I don't care because I'm fucking high. Like, it just sucked. So, I'm, I'm off of You were of coughing things. up blood at one point? No, but it just, like, like, my throat was so irritated, it hurt to, like, cough and, like, get stuff up. I'm like, all right, dude, this is not good. But I was going to vapes because it's so convenient. And it doesn't smell, and it's, you know, I'm a dad. Like, I can't be fucking smelling like weed all the time. So, I don't know. So I just figured, fuck it, take a break, and then (laughs) smoke every now and again at night, you know, when you feel like it. But, anyway. So, I'm treating uh, vapes in a new way. But, uh, how do you treat new clothing? I was curious. Do you leave stickers or tags on anything? Mm, on my hats, on my hats, new hats, but I don't do it on clothes. I used to. It's kind of a fashion statement. Some places, like it's kind of a fashion thing for some people. Like I know a lot of people who leave the tag that hang down the front of their jeans, like on some other nice pair of jeans. But like, no offense, my people pay a lot for jeans, bro. Like, like I don't know what they be thinking. Like I know dudes who pay four or five hundred dollars for a pair yeah, of jeans. Yeah, that's like, bananas, bro. Yeah. Like, so yeah, they want everybody to know what type of jeans they are. So the tags are here, hanging on the front. Or I ain't doing it, man. Like I ain't See, what's that what's with the jeans, tags so. on the hat? Is that a style thing? Because the when I was a to... habit thing at this point, I've done it all my life. Like you just don't rip them off when you buy. Like you just buy the hat and put it on. Man. See, back in the day when I went to high school, there were very clever kids that they always were looking fucking fresh. You're like, what the fuck? It's because they buy a red hat, return it on, on Monday, return it on Wednesday, get a blue hat. 
And fucking they kept the tags on so they could keep <laughs> returning and changing the colors, rotating yeah. colors. Oh, no, no, I wasn't better of a tenant for me. It's just a habit, man. It's just, we, it's what we do, man. So do you leave mm-hmm. all of them on or just the specific, like, brand label, like, on the bill? No, it's the 50-50 thing, yeah. like, the size one. You know that one? Yeah. I don't leave the under, like, the price. On yeah, them. I was going to say, like, the, the barcode and shit. Because some people leave that shit on there. <laughs> mm. But I think those are the people that return their shit. Like they and wear when I first start wearing Levi's, I would leave the Levi sticker, you know, like the one with the side down. The <laughs> but I don't do it anymore. Like Dude, I'd be down. embarrassed. I'd be like, oh, nobody wants to see a 38 waist, 32 length. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so. Uh, but no, I don't have nothing to do. Oh, man. But do you, okay, what I about, do you wash clothes right away or do you wear them? You know, I, now I wash. I, I wasn't like that before. I would say that that's changed because of the pandemic. But I wash. I don't wash. I don't do nothing. I wash. I buy like bowls, clothes, shoe, whatever it is. Like I'm a spray. I got a spray for the inside of shoes. Like at the bowling alley. Like anything I buy now, I'm sanitizing before I put it on me on my. But what about hoodies? Yeah. Like, dude, that was the best back in the day. Get a brand new hoodie, not wash it, and just. <gasps> Yeah, like you a so blanket snuggly, on your you body. Don't know, <laughs> you don't know how many people touch that while I was sitting in the store now, so you probably want to watch it. Right? Yeah, now I wash everything, you know, but, man, that was the move back in the day. Oh, Dude, definitely, bro. I saw a move at Costco the other day that I was fucking jealous of. Let me tell you. This dude was rocking a turban, and he had a bandana for his face covering just tucked into the top of his turban. I'm like, that's fucking brilliant, dude. I wish I could rock a turban just so I could wear a comfortable mask <laughs> like that. Like, I was like, yeah, fuck, dude, this guy's on point. It probably doesn't protect them from shit, though. I don't understand people in these cloth masks. Like, it's just, that's just a fashion statement. Don't really provide you no real protection. Well, it's it's better than nothing. I'm out here in, like, surgical masks every day. <laughs> I, just wear, I just wear the same one, but it covers... Like, it's a fabric, it's a double fabric, but it covers, like, all the way up to here. But I've also been vaccinated and had the Delta variant, <laughs> so I pretty much... But I still wear my mask everywhere I go, even with people that aren't wearing their masks. I don't give a shit. Yeah, I got N95, man. I brought them from this head warehouse store around the house, corner from my house, so I don't play around. You got the ones with the little Star Wars thing on them? <sighs> The respirator. No, no, thing. no, no, no. I got the actual N95, like the without the Star Wars thing, the real, like the with the yellow thing to go around your head and all that crap. Oh yeah, yeah. you're going Outbreak style. Definitely, buddy. Have you ever seen Outbreak? Nope. Oh, we should watch it. We should have watched it a year ago. <laughs> <laughs> you no. Know, oh, all but, right. So we I, had. I had a debate with one of my buddies uh, the other night. We were watching baseball, playoff baseball, and we were talking about jerseys, specifically getting individual players with their names on the back. And I was talking to one of my friends, who is a couple years older than me, and one of my friend's fathers, who is, you know, a generation older. And (laughs) they were both, like, the hard and fast Nah, man, you don't wear another man's name on your back. It's like, okay, I can kind of see that old school mentality, but that's also kind of primitive and like, dude, if you want to celebrate somebody, celebrate them. Who gives a shit? I wear any jersey that with somebody on the team that I like. Them. Yeah, see, I my thing is, I'm totally cool with my home team having like a blank jersey, like you know if. Uh, Giants or 49ers or Lakers Kings like having a blank one and then getting individual players that I like or even other teams like dude I want an Alves jersey because I think the Braves jerseys are awesome I'm finally over the early to mid 90s when the Braves dominated the Giants I'm over that finally took a while and and I love Alves so I'd love to get an Alves jersey Oh, you yeah, know. see, no, where I'm from, if you wear a jersey without a name on, they're going to think it's like a cheap knockoff. So, no, you need to know, we need to know that it is a official. Yeah. <laughs> With the stitching and yeah. the patches, none of this fucking roll-on, glue-down. Yeah, buddy. <laughs> or you will get joked on. Yeah, your patches mm-hmm. better be sewn in, son. <laughs> exactly. You know buddy. what I'm saying? Yeah. We'll rip those motherfuckers off. Yeah. That used to be the thing. Yeah. If you see a patch peeling off of somebody's backpack or vest or something, be like, 
<laughs> Mine now, motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, shit. oh man! Wow. So, are you ready for are you ready for what, the world that we're about to enter, sports wise? Um, I'm trying to. I'm trying to. I'm really trying to get on board with baseball, and I, I'm having a hard time picking a picking somebody to go with. I think I'm just gonna saddle up with your socks, because even though I don't <laughs> think they deserve to win the World Series, because I don't think they're that good. They what do you are. mean by deserve? Listen, when one of their own of fans tags. is like, oh, we're dog shit, we're not fucking barely going to limp in the playoffs, like, yeah, okay, so you don't have faith in them, why should I? Because what do you? What happens when you put a bunch of ragtags together that have one goal in common? See, these are a whole bunch of people that people told them that they couldn't. But you have to really hey, realize. I'm a Giants fan. I lived it. Oh, I lived oh, the check We, swing, we made brother. this whole team with a whole bunch of people that nobody wanted. You got to realize that everybody that we got in the Mookie trade is – you know what I'm saying? Playing significant yeah. role. Renfro. Yeah, the they're Tampa all ancillary players. Right. Like, you no know I'm saying? The, our infield is Boston made, but the outfielders are all due to trade. Yeah. And we just picked them up and had to fill them in. Our catcher's been there, and we're doing pitcher by commit. Like, these pitchers, I'll tell you this, Sell was supposed to be the head of the squad. He can't even get through two innings. Evaldi's our guy. But Evaldi's our guy, and I like Evaldi, but Evaldi actually got his name from being a uh, – He's a reliever. Um, a reliever in yeah. the, like World Series two years ago, and so that's when they knew he was good. But the surprise is yesterday, six innings out of Eduardo Rodriguez. If we can get another, if Eduardo Rodriguez can pitch like we think Eduardo Rodriguez can pitch, which is why he was paid initially, then we're good because he's a good pitcher. He's a good left-handed pitcher when he can pitch. But Eduardo doesn't bring it that often, man. Like, so when he's on, he's on, and when he's off, he's right. Off, he's off. Yes, because yeah. you like they were talking about that yesterday. Last time he pissed against the Astros, he didn't get out the second inning. and they touched him up. He was on yesterday, but I think anybody with those sliders, when it comes to playoff, needs shorter rest. That's just my. That's just my. Because when your slider ain't sliding, <laughs> you know, it's like you need that tire, a little bit of a tire arm to yeah. get that slider to slide the way you should. You know what I'm saying? No, Chris absolutely, Seven. absolutely. You got to go back to the drawing board. I agree with that. All right, so let me ask you this. If the Bo Sox lose to the Astros, who do you want to win the World Series? Who are you rooting for? I don't for? want the Astros to win. I'm not a, I'm not a fan of cheaters, so I'm going to be honest with you. I'm rooting for anybody besides the Astros. Bo Sox, I'll take the Dodgers, I'll take the Braves. But, okay, so if I the mean, Sox win, who would you rather play in the World Series and why? I'd rather play the Braves. The pitching staff is just not as good. So you don't want to beat the best? No. People, that is that is the biggest crock of bullshit. Right? Isn't that so stupid? (laughs) I can see if it's a one-on-one matchup, yes, you want to beat the best. But if it's a team sport, fuck that. We're looking for Ws. (laughs) I want the Ws. Yeah, you're like, oh, Aaron Rodgers is hurt this week? Fuck yeah. Mm -hmm. (laughs) <laughs> I don't want to be hurt for life. I don't want anything bad to happen to no, him. No, he has the flu. A, He's fine. Yeah, he got a flu or a hangnail. I don't care what it is. You Hangover, play his whatever. Mountain. There you go. <laughs> I, people can cut it out with that. Uh, yeah, I want to. No, no, no. I'm good. I'm good. I'm having to face the Dodgers. Even though the Dodgers don't really scare me per se. They, I was um, talking to my buddy, and he's like, they're unbeatable. I'm like, they're not unbeatable. Like, the Giants the show that they were very un- good, unbeatable. But the pitching staff... The pitching staff is not playoff proven. Correct. I don't know what it is with the Dodgers and when it comes to the playoffs, but they Scherzer is usually clutch in the playoffs because he was clutch for the Nats, but he's not even showing up for the Dodgers in the playoffs. I've never been a fan of Bueller. He's a regular season guy, and we all know well Kershaw is not there, but he's a regular season guy. Like they brought what's your boy uh that was supposed to be a sign. Urias. Yeah, they brought him out the bullpen yeah. the other day. Uh, Urias, got so they have, they have no, they got no faith to use. So who y'all go to? Game through? Who shot Ryu? Dude, he's he's kind of the same as your boy. He, he is hit and miss. When he's on, yeah. he throws well, seven, on. gives up one. Yeah. And when he's off, he goes three and gives up four. <laughs> you know, it's. And then their back end would have been super good, but Jensen's ending the end of his career. So, like, so I'm not, I don't fear them. The way my boys are ranking right now, I don't fear nobody. Yeah, I mean, me the, the last two games, you guys are <laughs> just putting them up. That's for sure. I didn't even know. We've had 10 hits in like out of seven out of the last eight games. Like, we're raking right now. So, line them up while we're hot. Come on. Yeah, I I think just for you, I'm jumping on the Bo Sox bandwagon because I can't. 
It's either them or the Braves. And I kind of want to start rooting for the Braves, but Freddie Freeman is looking like dog shit right now, and I like him as a guy. He's a good dad. But, <laughs> uh, dude, you are failing in the playoffs. He needs to be bumped down in the lineup. and But he hit the walk-off in the first round. Yeah, and then he, he struck out the, six well, no, times he... in a row and then <laughs> finally flew out to left field. Uh, like, you could see it in his face. Like, he just gets up and he's disheveled at the plate. It's like, But I'm uh, surprised they even made that fall because you know my boys got – see, my boy hurt. Because I like the Braves, too, because they got Albies and my boy who's hurt. Uh, what's his name? I can't – Acuna, that's my guy. Yeah, I like Acuna. I like Acuna. Nicky and I like Marquez for some reason, man. I've always liked Marquez, man. Really? Oh no. Yeah, he when he was in Baltimore, he used to give Boston fits. Yeah. He used to give Boston fits. He had that. Arm I never and, liked uh, him because of fantasy. I was like, man, uh, yeah, it's like you're any like he wasn't consistent enough for me. But no, I don't I know what it. it was about him that I liked, man. Yeah, no, I get it. There's certain <laughs> players that you just kind of have an affinity for. Yeah, yeah, you get this gravitation to it. You get this affinity for it. He yeah. was one of them. Nick Marcakis. Oh, man. So what do you think about NBA tip-off? Anything of note? Or is it just let's wait a month and see what happens and then start talking about it? I mean, we all know who the favorites are. Everybody's going to want to see 360 um, up close in person. The Lakers, I call them 360. Why? The only people that matter. Um, <laughs> yeah, we want to see them up close in person because I just don't see how it works. I just don't see it. I want to see it, though, because if anybody can make it work, it's Braun. But, like, what are you going to do? You're going to play Westbrook with the ball in his hand? Cause we're, like, there's no way that I you can know. see him playing off ball. Like, I just don't see Westbrook playing off ball because what does he do as an off ball guard? Like, I just don't understand. He's just going to be – it's going to be a double drive. They're going to use, like, the Calipari system where they do the drive and then you can't Maybe. get to him coming behind it's you type like, like, like the dribble drive system. Like, I mean, it might work because he's aggressive to the back, but that's, that's it. That's what I'm like, saying is jump shots. If, if he's on board with every time starting at, you know, the corner of the key – and just diving in. Diving? And then it's, yeah. you either get the ball or somebody or shoots it from outside. If yeah. you're okay with doing that move from yeah. both sides every single time, fucking they're golden, bro. But he's yeah. got to be on the same page. <laughs> he's got to be willing to do it. That's the whole thing. Because he'll pull be the it. center and whoever's got him on man. So he's got two people there. Or he's going to dish around the center. And That's if it's dr- LeBron driving the other way, who is LeBron? Like, y'all are occupying probably four of the – I mean, four sets of eyes among you two people. So if your other three, and one of them is Anthony Davis. And you got AD. Like, it's just. Yeah, so if your other two dudes are hitting shots, y'all going to be great. But if Westbrook's not on board and he wants to play Westbrook ball, you're going to have a whole different problem. Yeah. Well, I wonder, I wonder, wonder, wonder. Let me just tantalize myself for a second here. I wonder if LeBron and Westbrook had a little sit down. With Anthony Davis. Well, they said they all three of them had to sit down. And they go, he goes, listen, I got two more years. You're chasing KD, right? I'll get you these rings. You play it my way. Then it's your, you're an Anthony's team, and you guys play it your way. Because I know you've got a chip on your shoulder about KD from that OKC shit and Harden. So you fucking, you get those rings. You outduel those boys, and you can have the team. And the thing about it I want to see is, when does LeBron get that first rest? Because the benefit to having Westbrook is it'll provide you with the ability to actually rest him early, and then you leave Westbrook out there to do his thing. So, I mean, it can definitely work. It can definitely work, man. It's So do you think the best thing for LeBron is to play the first eight minutes of the first quarter, sit, and then play all the second? Be eight. He might go six hard. Six hard and then sit. Six hard and then sit for a couple come in like two minutes into the second quarter or something like that and finish out the second quarter. There you go, man. Like he can sit like I was saying, cause you can let Brian, I mean, you can let him go. Can, that way you like, give Westbrook, Westbrook his time too, to, to manage the to ball. Do thing. Yeah. yeah. So you don't got to worry about him crying and stuff. Yeah. That. If you take, yeah, that makes sense. Dude. If you take a third of the minutes and sit LeBron for a third of the minutes in both halves, that's plenty of time for Westbrook to run around like a Muppet and feel like he's doing his thing. You know, there you go. Yeah, you can speed Gonzalez around that place. I like that, but, you know, like you said, we got to see how that shakes out. And then what's up in Brooklyn? It's just like we're just waiting for fucking April. I mean, they're just going to have to go with the team as is. They ain't no – he's not playing. Kyrie. Do you think he's going to sit out the whole year? 
Yeah. I think he's done. You think he's finished? He's going to make a Kaepernick stand and just fucking be done? Yes. I can respect that. So, what do you... All right, transitioning to the NFL. We were talking about Aaron Rodgers earlier. What do you think about his Chicago taunting antics? I thought it was fucking great. I love it. Yeah. I love it. Look, some of the best jokes are built on truth. The truth is he owns their ass. 22 and 5 says I own your ass. I just so, love the fact that he's like, this is my last or second to last. or you know, he, He's only got a couple years left. He's like, I'm doing whatever I want. <laughs> he's having fun. I love it. Good for you. Yeah, and it's that. you've proven yourself. So go for it, dude. Yeah, all right. And all right. Can we just address the fact that Derek Carr's hair is awful and so is he? Like, I think he started dyeing his hair black. Awful? Yeah, awful. I wouldn't call Derek Carr awful. If, okay, let's just say if Justin Herbert was on the Raiders, they'd be 5-1. and one. Really? You think that? Fuck yeah. And Derek Carr has a ton of passing yards. A ton of passing yeah, yards. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, you think Justin David Carr... Have you watched any that? of the Raiders games, though? <laughs> I don't watch them. I don't watch them. I'm not going to lie. Um, so I saw one up close and personal. That bad? And I saw a little bit on television over the past weekend. And the way that he gets his yards is he throws to a zone where the wide receiver is supposed to be. And it's up to them to get well, around the defender. That's how you play quarterback. That's how you play quarterback. Man. But he doesn't like, throw his guys open. He doesn't. No. A lot of his guys catch it in the belly. Okay? A lot of his guys catch it in the belly. That's not how you're supposed to be throwing the ball to your receivers. It's because they're like, oh, let me adjust to this and get it wherever I can with the most support because it's not where it's supposed to be. I can't make a football move after this. I just have to secure the ball. That's how he gets his yards. He does not leave opportunity for yards after the catch. So, yeah, go ahead. But that's why you only score, like, three touchdowns a game and you have 300-something yards passing. It's because they can't run and score. But he's like number four in the NFL, like in yards per game. I think he's two or three. Yeah, like you can't. He's pretty good. But you can't score touchdowns like that. You got to throw your guys open. Give them a chance. And he's got one of the fastest guys in the NFL. Whatever. I don't know. Stafford's number four on the list at 1838. Which means that his projected for the overall season has dropped to 5,207. You nervous? Or are you getting more confident? No, I'm not nervous at all. Why? You should be. I ain't worried about Stafford. He ain't making it through the season. You know, come next week, we're going to have all four sports going at one time. Yeah, it's going to be nice. It's going to be amazing. I live for this shit. Who's your hockey team? I root for the Caps. I really don't have a team, but I root for the Caps. I'm like Obi. I met you his like parents once, so yeah, I met his parents once. So I'm oh, saying. that's nice. Yeah, they used to when I work with kids. Um, wildly, Obi's kids used to go to like the school. I didn't know they were Obi's kids, but his mom like they used to come pick him up. Uh, that's how I got my first uh, ticket to a hockey game. Yeah, they used to grandparents used to come pick up his kid. Oh, kids. that's excellent. Yeah, so, and I didn't know, clearly, you know, you see the Russian people come in and they, they you know, they got the accent, you know, I'm like, oh, that's old baskets. Just so happened, we were talking about something one day and she inserted herself in the conversation, real nice lady. And it was like, yeah, would y'all like some tickets to go see? And I'm thinking she just give us tickets. No, I go get to the game and we're sitting beside her and then her husband, <laughs> like, I'm like, okay, well, you gave us y'all, like, extra tickets. That's what's up. Like, yeah, yeah, that is seats, awesome. You, you got know, to so. sit and watch Listen. the game with them. That's cool. Yeah, she, yeah, they get into it, too, though. But, yeah. Well, dude, that's their boy. Absolutely. Like, it's, it doesn't matter if he's one glad. of the baddest dudes on the ice. That's still their baby boy. <laughs> exactly. I've been trying to break the glass on mine. Yeah, exactly. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> oh, shit. So, fantasy football update. Uh... Mike beat my wife. Mike beats my wife. Hey. I'm going to isolate that, by the way. Just use Whoa, it as a button. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. but, um, 
And you know that pass actually gave me a win in all three of my fantasy league games because I have that same duo in every league. <laughs> Your CD Lamb pass? Dak to CD in every I have Dak or CD in every league. So when they have a bad week, I have a bad week, but they have a good week like last week. I have a good week. Yeah, I'm still pissed that I don't have CD Lamb on my team that I fucked that yeah. up in the draft, but whatever. I love that walk off. That's all right. Everybody was laughing at my Jalen Hurts pick. So I proposed a trade to three different people. I put up Leonard Fournette and Chris Godwin to three different people on like Thursday or Friday last week. And so Sunday, I thought I took all the trades down. But apparently (laughs) I forgot to do one or I didn't click confirm or whatever on one. So it went through. So now I'm getting Emmanuel Sanders and Nick Chubb for Godwin and Fournette, and it's coming on the week that I definitely wanted to cancel it because uh, Chubb's out this week, which I did. I knew that was a part of the gig, but Emmanuel Sanders has a bye week. So I would have at least waited until next week to pull the trigger if I was going to do it, but I wanted to cancel it anyway. So now I'm like, all right, let me figure out how I'm going to remaneuver to make sure that I think I'm just going to accept the loss this week and just go, I'm not wasting my waiver pick. I'll play with who I've got, you know, I'll, I'll mess around so I have a full lineup, but I'm not, you know, I like the guys I have except for maybe one or two, so I'll switch those guys out for bye weeks and whatever, but that's about it. I'll, I'll take my chances. Yeah, I did that. I had to do that in my other league. I had to take the most because I have too many guys that I like, and I had both of my quarterbacks and C.D. Lamb are all on break at the same time, so I have three players. I ain't about to just cut and do all that with three players. <laughs> yeah, it's one of those things where I've done it in the past where I've actually drafted that way to where I'm like, like most of my players have by week seven or by week nine or whatever, and I'm like, I'm just accepting a loss that week, and I'm not dropping anybody. But depending on who I play, I might try to still steal me a victory. Depends, because, you know. I'm still going to try and steal a victory. Don't get me wrong. But I'm not going to compromise my team. I have to play Davis Mills and Geno this week. I'm going to lose. Like, Davis Mills and Geno. Well, the only reason why I think that there's a good chance that this week, like, there's going to be a couple of weird pops because this is the first big bye week. Where it's like, oh, shit. And it's like injuries are kind of piling up here and there for big position players. So it's like the the next three weeks are going to be tough for everybody. So it's just a matter of who shines, who has a big game because somebody else is out. Their counterpart was out or whatever. You know, like second running back steps up, all that kind of shit. So you never know. It's going to be a tough week, but I'll get through it. It'll be interesting. So Halloween is around the corner. Are you excited? No, I don't celebrate Halloween. Yeah, I know. Well, <laughs> did you ever used to have any Halloween traditions? Like, even though you I didn't used to celebrate? celebrate Halloween. Yeah, I used to have all types of traditions. I mean, we used to go play Nick or Knock. What is the fuck bags. is Nick or Knock? Just knock on people's door and run. That's Ding Dong Ditch, white version. There you go. <laughs> I got, oh, man. That sucks. Our neighborhood's at doorbells. <laughs> there you go. Yo, the worst thing is doing that in the apartment building. So we would split up. And the and we ever run across each other and be like, oh shit, they just opened the door on me. <laughs> yeah, so that used to be fun. Um, and we would also, you know, we had houses that we go to that we knew what they would have. So they would just put the bowls out. So we would just go there early, get all the candy, take one yeah. by ass. Yeah. But, Okay. Did you smash pumpkins? Definitely smash pumpkins. Love smashing pumpkins. Smashing pumpkins is fun, though. Because it just okay, splats man. and it's all over with. One good album. <laughs> but, oh, yeah, dude. My favorite thing on the Ring app is when people are like the neighborhood app, when they're like, people smash my pumpkin. I, dude, I laugh hysterically. Oh, but by the way, um, I got flagged on the neighborhood app. <laughs> Yo, why does everybody think everything is a gunshot, bro? Like, literally everything. I don't know. Every time I go on there, it's like, yo, you heard that noise at 3 o'clock in the morning? 
oh, there was gunshots. Oh, did you hear that howling? Oh, somebody got shot. Yeah. They were like, man, that's the god darn fox. The fox, <laughs> the fox was howling. They, they talk to each other on there. It's the funniest thing. Neighborhood is the funniest thing now that I have rain. Dude, oh, it's, it's so funny. funny. Yeah, so I got flagged. I had to, like, hit, I agree to be a good neighbor and not comment certain ways, like, all this stupid shit. I was like, I asked Dallas, I'm like, did you get this on the neighborhood app? She's like, no. I was like, okay. (laughs) I guess I need to be nice now. This is stupid. (laughs) Got to be more nicer, buddy. Got to be more nicer, my guy. But I am nice. I just like to be silly. That's all. When people put ridiculous shit... You know, like somebody stole my flip flops from my front porch. Like, well, they were fucking flip flops, man. Put them inside, or you know, let that guy have them. <laughs> Says you. You say you're nice. Other people think otherwise. I don't know. I just love the smashing pumpkin. You got flagged on an account that's not even in your name. <laughs> I know that's so bad. Like, how did they find me? <laughs> and the other you thing flagged. is. Dude, I you am so must have been really bad for them to flag user <laughs> one two three four five seven nine ten. No, <laughs> see, I that's the thing that I'm super confused about too is because every time you comment, it's a random number. It's like neighbor twenty seven, <laughs> neighbor thirty six. So how the fuck did they find me? <laughs> they just track my location. Like this guy is a fucking dick. People are like, hey, this guy's ruining my day. Oh well. They were waiting for your ass. They could suck a butt, dude. What are they going to do? Make me not talk to my neighbors? I don't do that anyway. Whatever. So, yeah. are you watching anything besides sports right now? Or are you just locked in? No, I'm watching. I'm watching the racket. I watched. The, I started the maid. I definitely just finished the Squid Game. Okay, you got to tell me about Squid Game. Because I, I saw that there was Squid like kids and suicide, and I'm like, I can't do it. Kids and suicide. That's what it... I don't know. I thought I read something about that. What's it about? No kids. There is some suicide yeah, in there. Okay. But you, you told you me to lay off the suicide, so I got. I can't no. watch... <laughs> yeah, no, kids can't watch this. You can't have it. No, not kids, kids. but I, I thought there were kids it. involved in the show. No, no kids involved okay. in the show. These are all adults. Oh. All adults. Oh, okay. No, all adults. Well, I think I missed um, the boat anyway. Oh, I mean, you can watch it. It's still pretty... Like, so... It's sad in a way, but since you know it's TV, it's kind of funny. You know what I mean? So it's... You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Well, I mean, it's obviously dramatized or whatever, but is it, like, so mm. ridiculous it's silly? Not so ridiculous that it's silly, but, like, the rate that people are getting murdered, it's it gets silly. Like, it gets, it gets kind of funny at a, at a point. Yeah. And then it goes back to getting serious and emotional, like, towards the end. It's, it's a wild show, but it's basically them. So the premise of the show is that they get everyone, like they find a way to find out a whole bunch of people that have debt, like gambling debt or whatever type of debt, and they get them to partake in this game. Yeah, I've seen this movie. Oh, okay. And so they get them to play games, but the games are not like you lose the game. Like the loss is you die. Yeah. <laughs> like you, you literally die, so. So it's it's just a wild situation. There's a movie I forget when it came out, and I don't I I'm gonna misremember the actors and everybody in it. There's like a quasi famous actor in it, but it was basically about the old school Russian roulette games, where like back in the day they would get these really rich people. You know, maybe hundred years ago or something, like not that long ago. People down on their luck, gambling debts. Uh, junkies, anybody that just wanted quick cash, and they would spin the chamber Russian roulette, and people would bet whether they would kick the bucket or not on that shot. And there's a movie about no, it. this is more like red light, green light, and if you don't stop on red light, your ass gets shot. <laughs> 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 so just imagine, I don't want to ruin it for you, but I don't know if you're ever going to watch it anyway, so let me just give you the premise of the first game. Like, So the first game is red light, green light, and they got this big ass doll that's calling red light, green light, right? But like she can sense movement too. So literally, when she said red light, she spins around. If your ass moves, you're shot dead right in front of it. So imagine not knowing that you were getting into a game where people are actually going to be shot and killed, right? 
Oh, so they the don't know person. that they're going to die? That's the whole fucked up part. Oh! At the very beginning, no one knows that the And then the they just see people death. dropping, but they're there? <laughs> so, so, they're pretty, pretty likely, like, you know, people want to finish first because there's a whole bunch of gamblers, and, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So you know the type of crowd we're in. Like, competition at this top. So the motherfucker takes off running. But you're outside on dirt. So he tries to come to a stop, not complete stop, and the motherfucker said, player such and such and such, you're eliminated. But the shot is a direct, like, sniper shot. Dr. Hobbly Wobbly got taken out in Squid Games. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, um, so it's a direct sniper shot. So they can't really see the shot, but they see the person go down. Got it. So then the next green light, the person who's the closest goes up to him and is like, oh, shit, and realize he's shot. And they're like, oh. So instead of paying attention to the game, like red light, green light, it goes red light. Everybody's running back trying to get out of the shit. It just starts shooting <laughs> all the <laughs> <laughs> It's a red light, motherfucker. That's like that test. So, like, on the very first game, like, 200-plus people get killed because they fucking think the game is going to stop for their ass. And, no, they just start shooting all all this and oh, like so many people yeah. like dead in the pile, bro. Like it's the wildest shit ever. That's like that test time. they give you back in elementary school, where it's like the second question or third question is like, if you read this question, you don't have to do any of the rest of the test. <laughs> and it's like everybody just fucking fills in all the shit anyway. All right, I got you. Pay oh, attention. Bro. It's quick oh. games. All right, so what's main? No. I th- I saw it was uh, on Netflix, about maid, right? About a maid lady who um I just got started with that though. About a maid lady who um came to the United States with her child, so I'm just getting into that, but I'm definitely going to watch that too. All right. I, uh... So I'm on BMF still. I'm so... I'm tantalized with anticipation to next week or the week after when you start, so we can start reviewing it in real time, because I enjoy it, dude. It's so well done. So well done. It's just consistent. Like, the first episode was good, and they've all consistently change the dynamic of the story and involve more plot and and more character interactions but kept the same um standard of writing so it's it's just a really really well done show like i'm i'm surprised at how much i like it i thought it was just gonna be like oh this is a cool thing to kind of you know like in the meantime an hour whatever but i'm like i get updates on my phone like hey new one's out i'm like cool i'll watch that on monday like i'm excited (laughs) to watch it this is it, man. And I actually watched In Too Deep last week, which I haven't seen in a long time because that, that's a wild movie. Yeah, it is. <laughs> I forget how good Let Omar Epps is too. I love Omar. That's Epps. a wild movie. But the reason why is because I was having a conversation with my wife on a road trip to Vegas about, and this may be controversial. I don't like LL Cool J as an artist, as a rapper. But I really like I him mean, as an actor. I don't like him as a rapper. I don't like him as a art. I don't like him as an actor. I don't, I don't, I'm not a, I don't, I don't like him as a person fan. either, by the way. I think he's a dog as a person. But as an actor, <laughs> he does well on screen. I don't even watch him as an actor. I don't think I watch him in anything or none of that. None about uh, uh, Kuji. I definitely don't listen to him rap. I've been a kid no, this you, whole time. Hey, you have seen um, fucking. You've seen oh, I see into deep, but his name was God in into yeah, deep. So that, yeah, yeah, that's taking that seriously, bro. Like that. Yeah, but he was he also did. in. Um, oh my gosh, why is the movie escaping me? Pacino, Jamie Fox, football. Oh, um, LT, fucking. Oh, I know what you're talking about. Any uh, given Sunday, Jesus. Any given Sunday. Oh my gosh, man. I would have really hurt myself if I couldn't think of that one. I love that movie. <laughs> it's not great, but I love it. It's it's kind of like uh, the serious version of Major League, but for football. <laughs> like it's it's goofy and silly, but it's also intense and serious. Like they tried to make it intense and serious at points. Like I don't know, it's kind of whack, but it was decent. He was decent in that. He was decent in like SWAT, which is a garbage movie, but I like it. <laughs> hey, actually, I like SWAT. I'm gonna take that back. I like SWAT. I like SWAT. SWAT. That's one of those movie. movies that it's like if it's on HBO, I'm like yeah, I'll watch this. It doesn't matter where it is in the movie. Like I can just jump in at any point because it's just whatever, you know. 
It's an action Willie flick. Willie Beeman. <laughs> yeah, Willie Beeman. He made me think about any given Sunday. I can't believe it. Got me screaming. Willie Beeman. <laughs> and the music videos. Oh. Might be time to rewatch that since it is football season. It might be time. That's what I'm I might have about to right go relook at that. I think I might have to rewatch that. All right. Well, maybe you can make that your homework at some point during the week. I'm going to make my homework. Uh, Theo Vaughn's new comedy special came out uh, today. Who's Theo Vaughn? Is he as good as uh, the other boy that you introduced me to? Who? Who did I introduce you to? Tom. Oh, Tom Segura? Yeah. Well, I mean, all comedians are different. Uh, I wouldn't compare him as far as apples to apples because everybody's got a different style. But I really, he's a good person. Is he as funny as Tom Segura? He, That's a he is question. hilarious. Yes. Oh, okay. He is hilarious. And he he's it, from the South. Turn it into a, a arithmetic question. No, he's, uh, <laughs> he's from the South. He's just got a funny way. Uh, he's got a funny perspective and is really good at articulating his silly perspective. So I'm really looking forward to it. And his, his special is called Regular People. Because that's what he is. He's okay. a regular dude that just happens to be funny. And he's fucking hilarious. So I'm looking forward to that. So I'm be uh, watching that tonight. And yeah. this week, the playlist is as good as it's going to get for me. <laughs> it's Florence and the Machine and Michael Jackson. I understand some people have an issue with Florence and the Machine. Well, you don't have to this- listen. Nobody on this podcast got an issue with Florence or Michael. That's what this I'm talking about. This podcast is pro Michael Jackson. Because so sometimes ignorance is bliss. And on that note, be sure to follow us on YouTube, Instagram, at Black Irish Pod, at Black Irish 213, and at Brendalis7. Make sure you give us a share this week. That's all we're follow, asking follow, for. Follow, follow, follow. Subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. <laughs> I don't know how this guy keeps his mind on baseball with, with all the paternity suits and all. I think those are parking tickets. <laughs> yeah. Give us a follow. I love you, dude. I love you too, my guy. <laughs>